Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, everybody. Uh, I'm Tracy, and I'd like to thank our sponsors that you can see here for making this event possible. After this event and a break, uh, please tune in for monitoring data privacy development through open source intelligence. Now, I'd like to introduce you to a new Modi speaking to us on pen testing Android applications. Anu is a cybersecurity enthusiast with four years experience performing vulnerability assessments and pen testing on various web and mobile applications. Anu, floor is yours. Hi, thank you, Tracy. So I'll just share my screen. All right, everyone, good morning. So today I'm going to be talking about how to get started with Android applications pen testing. So let's begin. Uh, the agenda for today is going to be what and why Android application security, the setup required, and some pen testing scenarios. So coming to the why Android application security. So according to the site bankmycell.com, 6.5 billion people own a smartphone. Now that's a huge number. And as of January 2022, Android accounts for 69% of the global market share. So even though iOS is more popular in US, Android still holds a huge market in uh, the global market. So we really need to concentrate on Android as well. Next, companies want to rush to the market with their products. So what this does is a lot of vulnerabilities are still present, which can lead to the compromise of private and co confidential information of the users. Uh, after that, users tend to save a lot of personal information on their devices. So be it screenshots, photos, fitness apps, your heartbeat is recorded, you have your work applications, you have uh, other applications that is always logging your data. So you have a ton of information on your uh, device. Then mobile phones don't have the same security as web applications. For example, think about four digit pins or no pins at all. Think about a fingerprint scanner. Maybe it is not enabled. Also, you tend to carry your mobile phones everywhere. You tend to carry it to, your, to the marketplace, to the gym, every place you carry it. So it uh, poses a lot of risk to your mobile device because it can get lost and, uh, and all the data is easily accessible to a hacker. So now we know why it is important. Moving on to what. So what is Android pen testing? Android pen testing is the process of finding security vulnerabilities and trying to attack the Android app by using various methods and tools. So my slides will today be divided into two parts. That is the dynamic analysis and the static analysis. For dynamic analysis, so what is it? It's testing the application while it is running. We'll be capturing the request and response live and modifying the data on the fly. Coming to the static analysis part, uh, this deals with decompiling the APK file. We will be examining the code and checking the manifest file. Don't worry if you don't know what a manifest file is right now. We'll be seeing it later on. OK, next, coming to the tools required. So these are the five tools that we will be looking at today. That is Android Studio, Jenny Motion, Burp Suite, JDGUI, and dex 2 jar This is in no way a complete list, and we have a ton of other tools that will be uh, there. So coming to dynamic analysis, uh, the first tool that we'll be looking at as is Android Studio. Android Studio provides application builders with an integrated development environment optimized for Android apps. So just go to the uh, link provided, click next and install it, and you'll be greeted with the screen. Once you have the screen, it means your Android Studio is installed. Um, Moving on to Android Debug Bridge. So uh, this is a versatile command line tool that lets you communicate with a device. It comes bundled with Android Studio, so you don't have to do anything else. The only thing that matters is the location of ADB EXE. So I've mentioned to you, this is the standard location. And to make your life easier, what you can do is you can add this to your environment variables. So I've given the steps for Windows. In Windows, you just need to go to System Properties, Environment Variables. Click on edit under the system variables and add the ADB path that I've provided. So this makes your ADB accessible from any location and uh, testing would be easier if you do this. 
ओके सो नाउ नेक्स्ट मी मूव टू जेनी मोशन जेनी मोशन प्रोवाइड्स फास्ट एंड्रॉइड वर्चुअल डिवाइसेस सो जस्ट गो टू द लिंक दैट आई प्रोवाइडेड यू विल हैव टू क्रिएट एन अकाउंट क्रिएट एन अकाउंट एंड देन इट विल बी फ्री फॉर जनरल यूज सो यू कैन डू दैट आफ्टर यू हैव uh install jenny motion there are a couple of settings that you need to do so what you have to do is go to uh, jenny motion settings and under adb just put this sdk path so sdk is software development kit that is provided by android studio so just add that after that just create a new device by clicking on new that so you see the plus button just click on that and you'll have a list of uh, virtual devices already present so just select any and leave all our default settings and uh, click install wait for a couple of minutes for it to finish installing after that on the main screen as you can see i have my two devices selected that is google nexus 4 and google nexus 6 so click on it and there's a start button just uh, click on start and wait for a few minutes and your virtual device is up and running so this part is complete now coming to the uh, ovas go droid this is a sample apk so we don't have permission to test applications which we don't own or or we don't have a written agreement for so we are going to use a sample apk so this is a very good uh, sample apk for testing just uh, download the zip and extract it and then just start the jar file and you will have this ui running so forgots is made of two applications i mean sorry gotroid is made of two applications forgots and herd financial i'll be working today with forgots uh, the process remains remain same for herd financial so no worries there okay so now we need to install this apk file on our virtual device so uh, in that same folder if you uh, navigate to this particular location which i have shared you will find the apk file uh, after that just run adb devices and it will show if the device is up and running or not in my case you can see that the ip address and the port is visible so it means that the uh, device is up and running after that just uh, you have to type adb install and path to apk Uh, and as you can see on the right side in my virtual device the four goods application is appeared so we have this installed uh, okay now we need to do a couple of setup these are some few more steps that you need to do so start the app and after that you just uh, click on those three uh, buttons uh, three dots on the side and to go to destination info and add your host ip address and the default port is 9888 so what this does is your uh, this app is acting like a client and the ui that is running on your host machine is uh, acting as a server so when you authenticate it's going to uh, you know this herd financial ui this is going to be your uh, a uh, backend so and here see uh, you have to click start web service so your server has started your client is ready so we are ready with that okay now next uh, coming to burp suite so uh, do i even need to introduce this tool this is like god's gift to web application pen testers so anyways this is a proxy tool for capturing request and response uh, go to the port swigger site and download it i have downloaded the community edition if you have the pro version nothing like it so just download that okay now coming to the burp speed settings what you have to do is go to proxy options and add uh then add a port number whichever you like i have added 8081 and make sure to select all interfaces so all interfaces is the key here to uh, capture the mobile traffic uh so just click okay and it will get added to your proxy listeners okay then moving on before we start capturing traffic we need to do one extra step for https sites that is we need to install the burp suite ca certificate for that what you have to do is go to proxy options and import export ca certificate click on export and certificate in dr format after that you can save that certificate anywhere of uh, uh, just remember the location and next uh, you need to have an email configured on your virtual device to receive files you can also do an adb push so i had my email configured bo both on my virtual device and on my browser running so i sent the file over to my um, virtual device and here uh, ca cert is downloaded now go to settings security and install from sd card and uh, a new window is going to pop up and just uh, click on internal storage and 
uh, you can see that your CA cert is there. So just click on that and a window will pop up and name the certificate as you like. And uh, in credential use, uh, select VPN and apps and click on OK. So now if you see, we have our uh, Portsweger CA saved. OK, so that is done. And uh, now finally, what we have to do is we have to go to settings, Wi-Fi and right click on it for two seconds. In my case, it's wired SSID. So uh, the below options would show up and click on modify network. After going to modify network, uh, you have to click on show advanced options and uh, in uh, we'll be configuring the proxy and IP settings. So for that, check your IP address. So IP address uh, here is my here is my host IP address and then in proxy select manual under the proxy host name. Uh, select the IP address of your host system, the proxy port, if you remember, I configured it as 8081 previously. So just enter that and leave all the other settings as it is and click on save. So now with my login screen of my GoTroid app and my proxy listeners running, let's see if we can capture the traffic. As you can see, I have my test. I have just entered a username and password, and it's coming in Verb Suite correctly. So now you can just test all other scenarios. You can test for SQL injection. You can test for uh, 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 you can brute force the password. You can test for authentication by fast. So all these things can be done. So dynamic analysis is done here. We have done with the setting with of dynamic analysis. Excuse me. Coming to the static analysis part. Let's start with, I have downloaded another APK for this. It's called the Diva APK and open it with your Android Studio. Okay. Uh, once you open with your Android Studio, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start analyzing a file called android.manifest file. If you remember, I mentioned it earlier, the android.manifest file. So every app must have this file. And uh, in this file, all the components of the application are declared, all the permissions that the app needs to communicate in uh, order to access protected parts of the system are also declared over here. Okay, so once you open the manifest file, what to look for? First thing uh, you're going to look for is allow backup attribute. Now this uh, attribute, if set to true, can allow backup of your app and can help attackers to get private data. So before going to production, this should be set to false. This will actually be a low issue, but still you should report this. Uh, coming for the next attribute, look for debuggable attribute. With this attribute set to true, sensitive data can be revealed and also app is vulnerable to decompilation. Again, this will be a low issue and uh, you should have this uh, turned off uh, before going to production. Now, next is checking for insecure permissions. Go through the permissions with the developer to identify the permission of each uh, to identify the necessary permissions. So for example, you have many apps that ask for SMS permission. Now they do this because they need to log in you with the OTP. But after, uh, but because of that, they will have like access to all your SMS messages. So do does your app really need that? So just sit with your developer. If you find any unnecessary permissions, flag it as an issue. And then your developer can come back and tell you if it's really required for the business or not. Okay. Now coming to an interesting scenario that is attacking activities. So what happens is Android app is built upon various components such as activities, services, content providers, broadcast receivers. I'm going to be talking about activities today. So what is an activity? So every screen that you see, that is an activity. The first screen that you see, like the login screen, that is one activity. After you log, log in, suppose you're greeted like, hey, Anu. So that is one activity. So. Uh, how can we attack that? How can we misuse, uh, you know, we, how can we abuse it? So again, looking at your manifest file, as you can see, there's an exported option is equal to true. What does this mean? This means that the component is public. And how can we use that? So observe in the screenshot that the activities.view profile has exported is equal to true. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this command adb shell am start uh, dash n and the package name and the activities. So ADB, as I mentioned, it can communicate with your device. So it's starting a shell on your virtual device. AM stands for Activity Manager, which is a utility provided by ADB. And it's asking the Activity Manager to start a new activity in this package. This package name you can get from Android manifest file itself. And the activity name we saw because it had exported is equal to true set. So what, do, what happened here? I did not 
uh, enter any username and password. But we could see, we could log in, we could see the internal screen. So this is this is an important one. We have to think about this, and this can be used for everything. You can uh, you can uh, test this scenario for services as well. For example, you have permission to start the location service, and if it's exported is equal to true, probably you can start it without the user's permission. So we can test it in all scenarios. This was just one scenario. Uh, so just be uh, think about it. So this is a good one. Coming to reverse engineering. Um, Android programs are compiled into DEX files, which are in turn zipped into a single APK file for the device. Now, Dalvik exec executable files are optimized for mobile devices, so they are very they very like compiled into a smaller file. So, to get uh, the Java code from it, we'll be using two uh, tools. That is Dex2Jar and JDGUI. Dex2Jar, as the name suggests, it'll convert the classes.dex file of an APK to classes.jar file. And JDGUI would be used to view the source code in a very beautiful format. So coming to uh, how we're going to do it, to navigate to the folder where you've downloaded Dex2Jar, this is how the Dex2Jar folder looks like. And then, uh, since I'm on Windows, use the command d2j dex2jar.bat and the path to the APK file. So you will get an output like this. You'll get a jar file. OK. Now, what do we do with this jar file? We'll, so I have opened this jar file with my JDGUI. And as you can see, we can see all the classes listed very nicely, beautifully. And we also have a very handy search feature in this. So what we can do is from the source code, we can check for hard coded passwords. We can check for any APIs, keys, because mobile uh, mobile phones use a lot of APIs. So we can check for any hard coded API keys. We can uh, check for sensitive information. We can understand the logic of the app. How is how is the communication happening? How if any parameter the user input is being taken directly without being sanitized? So this can be used. So this is the um, this is the Diva app. So you can see that we have found some uh, hard-coded password and there's an API name. So obviously, this is a sample APK. So we'll have this in production. Generally, it's not so easy, but you should test this. Uh, coming to the Gotroid app, which I mentioned earlier. So you can see, again, all the classes are mentioned here. And uh, going through all the classes, we end up finding the admin credentials. So you can. Uh, you can use these credentials to log into the application and then perform uh, more damage because you have a privileged account. So this is uh, this is another scenario that you have to take care of. OK, uh, this is uh, something which I wanted to share with you. So generally in corporate environment, the developers would provide you with an APK file. But what if you want to uh, test an application whose APK file is not present? So in that scenario, suppose imagine that you downloaded an application from Play Store. Imagine that I download this four quotes app from the Play Store. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull this APK using ADB. So again, I have used ADB devices and um, my IP address and uh, port is displayed. That's, that means my device is up and running. Then you will uh, take a shell uh, on the device, ADB shell command. Uh, so uh, virtual devices uh, like are rooted by default. If you are uh, using an Android phone properly, you will need to root it. After that, uh, use uh, PM stands for a package manager, and it is provided by ADB. So it will uh, PM list packages and grab the name of your uh, application. And since Android is built on a Linux kernel, all the Linux commands are valid. So the, this is going to run, and this is going to output a package name. Then uh, search for package manager and the package name, and you'll get a path. So package manager path and the name of the package. And there you can see it's in the data app. The APK file is there. So just exit the shell. And uh, then you can just perform the ADB pull command. After the pull command is done, uh, what you can do is uh, you can start the process of checking the manifest file. You can start the process of checking the source code. And uh, all again, the whole process will start same. So this is something you can think if you're doing on Hacker One, you're downloading. So you can start testing that. So that was all from my side. And uh, I'm going to be sharing two resources, which I think are very good. These two resources are free, OWASP and now Secure Academy. So just go ahead, learn more. And uh, I hope this can help you get started in the mobile application security domain. And uh, if you have any questions, you can drop 
in Discord and always uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. If you have any configuration issues while you're configuring your lab, you can ask me. I can help you with that because it has a lot of uh, nitty gritties. So thank you so much. And I, I hope it could help you in uh, some way. Thank you.